G'day guys. Us four-wheel drivers, we're pretty hard on our four-wheel drives and our radiators, they cop an absolute flogging. They go through mud holes, get all sorts of dust sucked through them, grass, leaves, you name it, it's in there. So without them, we're not going very far at all. In today's video, I'm gonna pull out my radiator and I'm gonna show you guys why it's really important to make sure that your radiator is nice and clean. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drain the coolant and seeing as I am draining the coolant, I'm actually gonna put some fresh stuff in there because it just makes sense to do it while I'm doing this. So we'll just move this hose clamp up and get this hose off. And there is absolutely no way that you're not gonna get covered in coolant, unfortunately. That's the way it goes with radiators. <laughs> I've just got this little uh, pry tool for radiator pipes and it's just so handy for doing stuff like this. You can kind of just like, just loosen it all up and then just rip it off. I think this car takes about 13 litres of coolant, so it's a fair bit. Anyway, we'll let that drip out. So while that's draining away underneath there, I'm just going to remove the top radiator hose here. So I've decided to remove the thermostat housing. That'll also allow me to give the whole system a good flush before I put the new coolant in. Oh, dang it. Don't you love it when a bolt goes flying? Oh man, where the heck did that go? <laughs> All right, so that should just come right off. Beautiful. All right, and there's the thermostat. Looks in pretty good condition, which is good. I found that screw that I dropped earlier, but I've got a bad feeling it's gonna end up in the radiator fluid bucket. Oh, yeah boy. Okay, awesome. So now all I've probably got to do is just undo these two 10 mil nuts. Well, that's a bit different. The um, air conditioning condenser is actually mounted to the radiator. So I've actually got a I'll have to hold that in place somehow while I remove the radiator. Awesome. A couple of cable ties should do the trick. Okay. Okay, so we've got one cable tie done. Now just the other one. I tell you what, when there's a fan shroud involved, you know it's always going to be good fun. Let's see if we can wriggle this thing out somehow. Some of them are two pieces, so it's easy to get them out. But this one here. Ah! That's how you do it. There is a second piece. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, awesome. That's how you do it. So this was a two-piece one after all. And remember guys, always be careful not to try and damage your fins because that's obviously what keeps your engine cool. So the more bent fins you have, the less efficient your radiator is. Beautiful. Well, we're getting there anyway. Not calling it a victory just yet. Awesome stuff. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure the radiator's ready to come out. It's all free, so after a little bit of wriggling, we should be able to get it out. Awesome. So why did I want to clean out my radiator? Well, check that out. It looks like I've brought back half the Pilbara from my last trip. It is just full on. So with a radiator, you're actually meant to be able to see through all of the fins. And when you get the torch out, especially down the bottom of the radiator where it's the worst, like the light just almost doesn't come through at all. Like seriously, <laughs> check it out. It is bad, man. That is shocking. So let's clean this thing out. So I'm just getting rid of all the bigger bits because man, there's like stacks of leaves and all sorts of grass in here. And then after that, I've got this product here, air conditioner cleaner. Now, whatever you use, you want to make sure that it's non-acidic and that it's not going to damage the aluminium in the radiator. So this stuff is non-corrosive, so it should be perfect. Now, whatever you're doing with radiators, you want to make sure that you're very careful of the fins because if the fins are damaged, it affects the way that the air goes through them. So no matter whether you're putting it in, taking it out, trying to clean it, just be careful not to damage the fins because obviously it's going to affect the efficiency of the radiator. 
Okay, so we're just going to try this product out and see how well it works. says to leave it in there for three to five minutes. It's just amazing using the torch because you can, oh man, you can see how much junk is in there. Well, the product's been in there for about three to five minutes and uh, I'm gonna give it a wash out now. I've got a little karcher, it's about a thousand PSI pressure cleaner and I'm just gonna be really careful and just push all the dirt out. And I'm gonna do it from the back of the car to the front of the car because you don't wanna push the dirt further into the radiator, you wanna push it out the way it came in. Well, I'd say that looks a lot cleaner than it was. Still got stacks of grass covered out though. <laughs> so the radiator's all cleaned up and I'm pretty happy with how it's come up, you know. Looks pretty good. There's only one thing that I'm not really too happy about. On the uh, engine side of the radiator. Now here you can see the fins are all nice and straight. But when you come down here, they're really quite bent up. Now it's not too bad, I mean that's pretty shocking down here it's alright, but just through this section here, they're just all really bent up, so it might be time for a new radiator soon, but at least it's going to work better than it was because it's nice and clean. Another thing to check while you've got your radiator out is to have a look at the bottom and the top tank of the radiator and just look for any discoloration because if you see any discoloration, if it doesn't quite look nice and black, that means that it started to go rotten. And when it starts going rotten, that means it's going to blow some time. Trust me, I've been there, I've done that. So just have a good look at the top and the bottom tank. Make sure they're nice and black and they're not going rotten. They're not discoloured or anything like that. But anyway, guys, I just thought I'd put up this little video just to kind of make you guys aware that if you do do a fair bit of bush bashing and you have a lot of leaves and grass and all sorts of mud and dust going into your radiator, it's good to every now and then just to rip it out give it a good clean, put it back in, put some fresh coolant in, and that way you're gonna make sure that your cooling system's A1, which means that your engine is never gonna overheat or go kaboom. <laughs> anyway guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in another video, eh? Now let's put this thing back in. Seek adventure.